Hello again. Um, and um, in this week's lecture, we're going to cover uh, the concepts and basics of modeling the motion of a single vehicle. And that is the very fundamental or very first step in modeling traffic. But why is that important? Why do we care about modeling the movement of a single vehicle while traffic is, you know, hundreds or thousands of vehicles uh, are involved in traffic? The movement of a single vehicle can actually impact the performance of a traffic stream. Um, and understanding the characteristics, performance, and movement of every single vehicle actually allows us to model a group of vehicles. So a natural step is let's first understand how one single vehicle movement can be modeled, and then we can extend it to multiple vehicles and a group of vehicles. Um, and then that can be used to evaluate the performance of a traffic stream. So speaking of motion of a single vehicle, this is all based on laws of physics. And you probably already had this um, in any of your previous physics course or kinematic courses that you might have before, either in undergrad or in high school or anywhere else. So the motion of a single vehicle can actually be described mathematically using equations of motions in physics, which provides some formulas and relationships that relates some key parameters such as speed, acceleration, distance, travel time. So we'll, we'll try to derive some of some equations today that relates all these things for different uh, situations. But let's learn some fundamentals before we dive into some equations and uh, motion equations based on physics. What is a time and space diagram and what is a trajectory? These are the two main tools, or analysis tools, visualization tools that we use in traffic flow theory. And it's very important for you to become comfortable and familiar with them uh, very in, in a very early stage of when you're learning about traffic flow theory. So time and space diagram is a plot that time is on the horizontal axis and the vertical axis uh, represents location or distance of a vehicle. And the path that one object moves in time and space is called trajectory. So we draw trajectories in the time and space diagram. So if I wanna show you how it looks like, uh, this is an example of a time and space diagram and a trajectory where, as you can see, on the x-axis we have time and on the y-axis we have distance or space. And this trajectory shows the movement of a single vehicle as it moves over time and over distance. Um, so the vehicle starts from here let's say at time t0, at location or distance zero. And then over time, as time moves, the vehicle also moves. And again, as I said vehicle, but it doesn't have to be a vehicle. This could be a trajectory of an individual, a person. This could be the trajectory of an ant or a bird. Anything that moves can be represented as a trajectory in a time and space diagram. So, um, as the object is moving over time and space, you can see the trajectory is progressing and then it keeps going and going and going. But there are some interesting properties that we can observe in, a, in, a, in this trajectory. One is the slope of the trajectory. The slope of the trajectory actually, if we want to represent it mathematically, so imagine I have this trajectory. If I want to get the slope of the curve at any location, Mathematically, what would be the slope of this curve? It would be delta x over delta t, right? So that's the slope of the line because y-axis is x, which represents distance, and this is t. And you can see that any slope that I want to get is actually delta x over delta t. And going back to basics of physics, what is delta x over delta t? That is simply speed. 
of the moving object. So the slope of a trajectory, as you can see here, represents the speed. If we do it like delta x over delta t, we get the instantaneous speed of a moving object at any time or at, at any very narrow delta t. But for example, if you want to get the average speed of a vehicle, let's say from time t1 to time t2, which is, let's say, this is a large time interval. Let's say it's five minutes or 10 minutes or even one hour. It's a large time interval. So it's not instantaneous speed. It's more of an average speed that we're getting. So if I connect this point and this point, the slope of this line is again, delta x over delta t, but delta t here is a large interval, which is t2 minus t1, and delta x is actually xb minus xa, right? So xb minus xa. So this gives me the average speed of this moving object from t1 to t2, come, as opposed to the instantaneous speed that I could get at any time um, in this time-space diagram. So let's have a look at an example where we can plot the trajectory of vehicle X uh, given the following observed data. So imagine we collect some data from a single vehicle. Um, at every 10 seconds, we measure the distance traveled by the vehicle. So for example, if this is a vehicle and this is a road, at time, t equals zero, the vehicle is here. So let's say this is, this is the distance zero. 10 seconds later, the vehicle is here and the location is 30 meter from the origin. 10 seconds later, at t equal 20 seconds, the vehicle is here, that is 70 meter, and so on and so forth, okay? If we plot this on a time, time, time space diagram, um, We'll get something like this. Where, so this is a time and space diagram, an example of a time and space diagram where x axis is time, y axis is distance or location. And you can see that if you just plot the dots that we had, so at time zero, the vehicle is at location zero, at time equal 10 seconds, the vehicle is at 30, at time equal to 20 seconds, the vehicle at 70 and so on. And if you connect all these dots, you get the trajectory of the vehicle. So this is how we, this is how we draw the trajectory of a vehicle given the location of the vehicle over time. And we can plot this in MATLAB. Again, I leave this uh, demonstration in MATLAB for you to uh, practice. It's just an easy way of uh, getting yourself started with coding in MATLAB if you haven't done it before. Let me actually give you, let me actually show you because uh, it might be a good practice to um, um, work with MATLAB. So if I come out of this and if I try to open my MATLAB, you can, you can actually open MATLAB. Um, uh, I think I have to do it through my UNSW access, right? So if I go to my apps, and if I go to MATLAB, So MATLAB is a starting. Yes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to plot this time and space diagram and trajectory in MATLAB. Again, it's a very simple coding practice if you haven't worked with MATLAB before. So what we need to do is I'm gonna start in the workspace section, I'm gonna create uh, two um, variables or vectors basically. Uh, I call one of them time. And I'm gonna create another one called distance. I could also, I could do the same thing here in the command view. If I would, if I write time is equal to from zero to 
60 and for every 10 seconds. So what I'm writing here, the syntax says um, from zero to 60 and the step sizes are 10 seconds. So if I click on that, you can see that it creates a vector that's from zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And for the distance, I create a vector called distance and it would be 0, 30, 70, 120, 150, 160, and 165. So I also create a vector um, of distance. You can see if I double click on this distance vector that is created in the workspace, you can see it's, it appears here as a vector and also time here. And now simply, I, if I want to plot it, I just say plot time comma distance and I set um, how do I want to, the symbol that I want to create or oh, I want to create it with a line and a circle right so this shows um, and let's see so there you go so it creates the time and space diagram and the trajectory but I don't have any x and y axis so let's also add the x y uh, the x uh, the caption for the x and y axis uh, because without captions, that's not correct. So um, uh, I actually closed the plot so I can write it again. Um, plot, and then I put a semicolon instead of pressing enter, and then I shift enter. So I say x label um, time, second, and this one. So that gives me a caption for the x axis. And if I say y label, uh, distance m, this gives me the caption for the y-axis. So these are the captions I'd like to create. So now there you go. I plotted the same time and space diagram given that data and I put this caption time seconds and distance meter on the x and y-axis. So this is, this is now a nice graph with all the information you need to have. And if I want to plot this or if I want to save this, I can either save it as a PDF or PNG or JPG or any other format that you'd like to save. Uh, you can save it. So just wanted to show you a very simple example of how things can be coded in MATLAB to, to, to plot something like this. Uh, going back to uh, the PDF. Um, so we plotted the time and space diagram as an example, and this is how it looks like. But now let's go back to the trajectory and the basics with some math and physics. Um, in a trajectory, what does dx over dt represent? We talked about it and we said, if I have a, a time and space diagram like this, and this is my trajectory, the slope of the curve, the slope of the trajectory, oops, sorry, uh, the slope of the trajectory actually is, can be expressed as dx over dt, right? So this slope at any point uh, can be expressed as dx over dt, and that represents a speed, right? Or v, velocity. Uh, and then again, it can, it can have a unit of meter per second or kilometer per hour or whatever units uh, you're interested in. But what does d, the second derivative of the, trajectory represents. So again, if I have this time and space diagram, and this is my trajectory, so the slope was dx over dt, right? Which was a speed. But how about the second derivative of this uh, trajectory, like d2x over dt2? This is the second derivative of the trajectory. And again, if you remember from physics, this represents the acceleration. And this second derivative basically represents the curvature of this tra trajectory. Whether it's, if it is positive, it has a curvature towards, uh, like an upward curvature. If it has a negative acceleration, it has a curvature uh, towards uh, down or downward uh, curvature. So the second derivative uh, is actually, actually acceleration. So the second derivative of x with respect to t is acceleration, which is also equal to the first derivative of a speed over time. 
So right. Uh, so again, if you remember from physics, um, if I clean up some of these. So the second derivative of a, of a space with regard to, or distance with regard to time is actually equal to the first derivative of a speed with regard to time. And that is equal to the acceleration. Um, now let's derive the first motion equation um, that we can use for modeling uh, the location of a car or predicting the loca location of a car given its speed and initial location. So we said before that that the first derivative of that, that that the first derivative of x with respect to time represents a speed. So dx over dt is equal to speed. If we if we just uh, move dt to the other side of the equation, we get dx is equal to v dt, right? And now if we integrate both sides of the equation from zero, from sorry, from t0 to t1, from t0 to t1, uh, what do we get? If I integrate both sides, on the left side, I will, it's, this is an easy integration. Hopefully, hopefully you remember how to do this simple integration. We get x at t1 minus x at t0 would be equal to this integration t0, t1, v, dt, right? So now, if I move this to the other side of the equation, I get that x, t1 is equal to the integration of the speed plus x, t. So this is the initial location of the vehicle, right? x, t is the initial location of the vehicle. And x, t1, is the location of the vehicle or the moving object at time one. So with this simple motion equation, we can actually predict where the car or the moving object will be at some time later. If we have the initial location of it, and if we have the speed, we can easily get where will be the car. So as simple as that, that is the basic probably motion model or the movement model that we can derive. Now let's have a look at the second part of the motion equation. So that was the first equation of, that was the first motion equation that we would drive. Again, this is very simple, uh, basics of physics, probably if you remember. Now let's derive another motion equation that relates speed and acceleration. So we also said that dv over dt is equal to acceleration, right? So the first derivative of a speed with regard to time is equal to acceleration. So if again, if I rewrite this this way, that if I take dt to the other side of the equation, so if I have dv equal a multiply dt, and if I take the integration from both sides, from t0 to t1, from t0 to t1, uh, let's see what do we get. So on the left side, we I get vt1 minus vt0, and on the right side, let's keep the integration. And then if I move this vt0, which is the initial speed of the vehicle to the other side of the equation, I get vt is equal to from t0 to t1 acceleration dt plus vt0. So this is my second motion equation that relates speed and acceleration. So now if I have the initial speed of the vehicle, if I have the acceleration function of the vehicle, I can easily predict what will be the speed of the vehicle at some time later. Um, so this would be the second equation motion. Again, very basics physics, a very, very basics. Uh, this is the basics of uh, kinematic physics, if you remember. But this might, and you might, you might already had this before, as I said in, in your previous physics courses, but what is jerk? This is probably new to some of you. Um, jerk is actually, is the third derivation of distance with regard to time. So as we said before, uh, the first derivation of distance with regard to time is speed, right? The second derivation of a distance with regard to time is acceleration. 
And the third derivative of distance with regard to time is actually called jerk. And what, but what does jerk mean physically? Jerk is related to the, maybe the comfort feeling that some, a passenger has in a car. So for example, if you, if you, if you have a high jerk in your car, meaning that you, you change the acceleration level. So instead of keeping a, a instead of keeping a fixed acceleration, if you have a changing acceleration, an increasing acceleration or a decreasing acceleration, um, that means you have a high jerk in the, in the car and that makes the passenger feel uncomfortable. Uh, and that's something we want to avoid uh, when we are driving or if we are, if we are, if we are designing a car. Uh, we don't want the car to go with a high value of jerk because it feels terrible for the passenger in the car. And again, jerk is the third derivative of distance with regard to a speed, which is equivalent to the second derivative of a speed with regard to time, or the first derivative of acceleration with regard to time. So all of these three are equivalent, um, and they all represent uh, jerk. Um, now let's have a look at a case that we have constant speed. So um, if we have a speed VT and it is constant, the acceleration is obviously zero, right? So if we have a constant speed equal to V, that means acceleration AT is equal to zero. And therefore, if you rewrite the equation, the first uh, motion equation that we derived, so the first equation of motion was, uh, from t0, x t0 is actually the, the integration of speed plus x t0. And because now we replace this vt with a fixed or a constant the speed, and when we have a fixed number, inside the integration, what happens? You can just take it out, right? And then multiply it by the um, t0 minus, uh, sorry, t1 minus t0. So this is now a fixed value. So it comes out like v t min, t1 minus t0 plus xt. Uh, sorry, this should be t1 here. So xt1 is actually equal to the speed, the constant of speed multiplied by the time difference plus the initial location of the speed. Uh, so this is the first motion equation when we have a, a special case like constant of speed. And it's very easy to derive, right? So now let's have a look at an example where we would like to plot the trajectory of a single vehicle assuming the speed is constant. So the speed is constant and is equal to s, and the initial location of the vehicle is zero, and the initial time is also zero. So this is a very simple example. So we know dx over dt is equal to speed. Again, if I take this dt, um, if I actually take the integration from both sides, uh, I'll have dx equal to the integration, the integration of dx and vt dt. And uh, vt is equal to s, it's constant, so I replace this with s. So this will end up as x is equal to uh, s t, because t0 is also 0. Um, or if I want to write it properly, I will have, um, what do I, what, what will I have here? I will have um, xt minus xt zero would be equal to s multiply uh, t1 minus t zero. And because t zero is zero uh, and xt zero x at x zero is zero, so this will be zero two. So I will all have x at time t is equal to s multiply by t1. Or if I want to write it in a more simpler uh, way, it would just be equal, x is equal to the constant of speed multiplied by time, right? Very simple, you probably already know this. But how does this look like as, a, as an equation in a time and space diagram? 
um, we have time, we have distance, and then this equation is basically a straight line, right? A straight line with a, a fixed slope, where the slope here, delta x over delta t, represents the constant speed of the vehicle, right? So again, very simple, nothing too complicated about it. But now let's have a look at the case where we have constant acceleration. So if acceleration is constant, the, the acceleration function doesn't change over time, right? So we just give it a fixed number, let's say like 1.5 or 2 or whatever. Now, if you rewrite the motion equation, uh, which relates the speed and acceleration, we'll have, so look, we, we previously said, let me write it here. Uh, we said dv over dt is equal to acceleration. So dv is equal to a dt. Now, if I take integration, sorry, this is dv. Uh, dv. If I take the integral from both sides, uh, from t0 to t1, from t0 to t1, what do I get? I get vt minus vt0 is equal to the integration from t0 to t1 of a dt. And this, let me also this say, first, it's the, a function of, it's an acceleration function, but because this is, this is the case where the acceleration is constant, we can just replace this at with a single value of a into integration, right? So this is a, this is a single value. And then uh, if you have a single value or, uh, or, a fixed, or a fixed number inside the integration, you can just simply take it out, right? So it would, this becomes vt minus vt zero is equal to a t1 minus t zero plus vt zero. So, uh, sorry, not, uh, not that one for now. So it th this would be the this would be the result of this simple integration. And then if I take this v t zero to the other side of the equation, I end up with this simple motion equation where I have constant acceleration. So this would be my. Equa motion equation, then I have constant acceleration, right? Again, very simple basics of physics. Now, let's have a look at deriving. So look here, we, 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 we related speed and acceleration. How about we relate distance and acceleration? So what we want to do is we want to derive the equation for distance traveled for the constant acceleration case relating uh, location, uh, acceleration, and speed all together. So um, again, this equation should look familiar to you from undergrad physics or high school physics as well. Uh, so we start with uh, the relationship between uh, location and speed, as we saw earlier. And then if I replace this vt, this speed, uh, so you remember we derived this speed function as a, as, a, as a function of acceleration and the initial speed, right? So if I just take this equation that we derived for the constant acceleration and put it inside here instead of this vt function, I say, how about I put the equation that I derived in the previous slide where I have a t minus t0 plus vt0 dt plus x0. And if I take this integration, which isn't very hard to take, I'll get, um, I can actually break it into two integrals. So it would be t0 to t1 of a t dt minus T0 to T1, A T0, DT. And this VT0, because it's a constant value, it just comes out of the integral, right? So it just comes out as, it's, it just comes out from the integral as V0, T1 minus T0 plus X0. 
right? And then this these two integrals are easy to take because now a is a constant value. So it would simply be one over two um, a t minus t zero power two. And this one also uh, comes out because again, t zero is this value. It's not a, it's a single value. So this comes out easy as well. And the rest also comes here plus plus the rest of it. I don't have a space to write it. But what you'll end up having is you'll end up having another motion equation which relates the location of the car, its acceleration, uh, and the initial speed of the car and the initial location of the car. So if I ask you a question that I have a car at this location with this specific speed and this specific acceleration, where the car will be in five seconds or 10 seconds from now, you should be able to predict the location of the car by just using this simple uh, uh, equation of motion, right? So let's have a look at an example before we take a break. Um, I'm asking you to plot the trajectory of a vehicle X, assuming constant acceleration. So that means uh, AT is equal to the constant A and assuming the initial speed of the vehicle is zero, the initial location of the vehicle is zero, and also time zero is equal to zero. So that means I need to basically use this uh, equ equation of motion that we derived from the previous slide and plot this in a time and space diagram. And if you plot this in the time and space diagram, you can see that, uh, again, T0 is zero, so if I, um, let's let's put zeros in place. So if this is zero, x zero is also zero, v zero is zero, t zero is zero. So all of this will go out, right? So it's all of it will be zero. So what will, what I end up with is only one over two a t two. So that's my um, that's my equation. That's my trajectory. Um, if I want to plot it, and if I if and if you plot this um, in a time and space diagram, it looks like it looks something like this, where it has an upward curvature, if actually a is positive, right? So this is uh, this is this equation is actually x one to a two. So this line has this equation, and if a is positive. Um, it will have an upward curvature, and if, it, and if A is negative, it will have a downward curvature like this. So when, when, the, when a trajectory has a curvature like this towards upward, that means the vehicle is actually accelerating. For example, it was stopped initially, and then it is now accelerating, so the trajectory goes high like this. So if I want to draw it here, I want to draw the trajectory of a vehicle that is first actually going with a fixed speed. So let's do it this way. There is no, so this is T, this is X. So I have a vehicle that is going with zero acceleration. Then I have zero acceleration. My trajectory is basically just a straight line. As soon as the vehicle starts accelerating, I will start having a curvature, upward curvature, right? And then, I mean, this is a very high acceleration, but let's keep it this way. So I have an, I have a, um, I have a, I have a curvature now. And then, as soon, then suddenly, at any, at this time, the vehicle starts decelerating. So what will happen is the curvature changes to a downward curvature, right? And then, at some point, it reaches another constant of speed. And then if it suddenly stops, what will happen? The trajectory goes this way, like a horizontal line. Why? Because that means time is moving, but the location is fixed. The location is not moving. That means the vehicle is stopped. So if I want to break this um, into different sections, so this is a constant speed. This is a positive acceleration. So constant speed and acceleration is zero. This is positive acceleration, this section is a negative acceleration, the curvature is going downward, and then and I, again I have constant speed, 
with no acceleration. And then here, the slope is equal to zero. That means speed is zero. And because there is no curvature, acceleration is also zero. That means the, the this means basically this part, the vehicle is stopped. So this is how we interpret um, vehicle trajectories if we draw them. I think it's a good time to take a break before we continue.